Let's see what we can see. It's time for the Cooper Group's road trip to Whitesboro. We're traveling in a 2007 Saturn Outlook, courtesy of Saturn of Mohawk Valley. This premium mid-size crossover proves that size can be sensible. Whitesboro was named for its founder, Hugh White, who with his five sons took possession of a patent in 1784. You can trace the beginning of the village of Whitesboro here to the Whitestown Town Hall, which was originally the Oneida County Courthouse. It was the site of the first meeting of the new village of Whitesboro in 1813. This building was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1973 and celebrates its 200th anniversary this year. This is the uh, town of White's Town Hall, originally a United County Courthouse up until uh, about 1850. And what's very interesting this year is that the Landmark Society of Greater Utica has selected this to be the subject of their holiday ornament due out uh, um, before the Thanksgiving holidays, before the Christmas holidays. Philo White uh, is a grandson of our original settler, Hugh White. Hugh White uh, um, came up after the Revolutionary War and settled this area um, in 1784. Um, was a was a pioneer. We we let, let's call him. He um, convinced other uh, settlers to come up, try out this new land. I asked the mayor why he lives in Whitesboro and why he got into politics. It's, I love people, and I have a business in the village, so I'm, I'm meeting people all day, and, and it's it's absolute pleasure to, to, to serve people. I'm a public servant, and I'm not a politician, um, and welcome the opportunity to meet people and every day of my life, uh, all year long. I'm standing at the Erie Canal Memorial Park in Whitesboro. It will be dedicated this fall in commemoration of the fact that the Erie Canal ran right through here. We'll talk more about this with a local historian. We met Judy Malozzi at the Historical Society on Mosley Street. One of her favorite duties is teaching children about the Erie Canal. The first section was from Rome to Utica area because of the land being flat. And it was so important to Whitesboro because all of our industrial business was right on the canal actually. Before that, if you wanted to ship anything out, you went on the Mohawk River and you had to carry the boat in sections where the river didn't continue. Philo White, grandson of Whitesboro's founder Hugh White, played an important role in the canal development. He went to England to see how they built their canals and how you would get the second levels and keep going up. And in Lockport, actually, there's quite a few of the locks that they made. And he's very important because he developed a waterproof cement that they could use for these areas for the locks. So in the history of the Erie Canal, he's always mentioned. Continuously frustrating, continuously. Mr. George Dunham was born in Clayville in 1859, and he's best known for being editor and publisher of the Utica Daily Press, what we've now come to know as the Observer Dispatch. Upon his death, he left the homestead of his father, Reverend Moses Dunham, to the school district to become a public library. The Dunham Public Library is a favorite with children with their clever reading area, and every Monday night at 6.30 they have Teddy Bear and Me bedtime stories. Starting in July, it's chess for school-aged children every Thursday afternoon from 2 to 3. In the distance, a grizzly roll. With all the beautiful weather we've been having, what better way to enjoy the Mohawk Valley than with a scooter? And if you're a scooter enthusiast, come down to Northern Outfitters and bring your scooter every Thursday night at 6 o'clock for their scooter ride. <laughs> that we know is a risky 
Boulevard was actually the Erie Canal, and overlooking the Erie Canal is beautiful Grand View Cemetery, named because of its beautiful view of the Mohawk Valley below. When Hugh White saw the beautiful view, he decided it was where he would be buried, and he left this beautiful real estate to become a cemetery. When you first walk through, a lot of people think it's a plain Jane of a cemetery. Old stones, they see those other places, new stones mixed in. If you have a Puritan face stone, it's plain. People who study those don't care about the ones in Grand View. But we have two of them. That's extremely rare. One of them is probably the oldest stone in Oneida County. Uh, that's what you see when you walk through the cemetery. All the features that make up a cemetery, Grand View has examples of them all. And also each stone has not just an inspiring biography, but significant. So whether you're researching something as simple as family history or a significant abolitionist, you can tie that story into the local streets, the local churches, the local families. The, everybody knows about the Loomis gang and those brothers and sisters and the bad mom. Uh, but all the history books will say that they, you can't find the gravestones. They're all gone. Well, we've got one of the girls. I think she's the oldest girl. And she's up here in Grandview, married a lawyer. He's not too, uh, he's kind of a shady guy. Uh, but they're here, which means at one time, all the Loomis gang was here probably for a funeral. Jonas Platt, one woman called him the most significant figure in Oneida County history. And he was one of those people who pushed for the Erie Canal when nobody thought it could be done. That was very typical of the people who came to Whitesboro. We'll try something that nobody thinks can be done. What we can tell from the stories in the cemetery are his three daughters died one year after the other at age, oh, like eight, nine, and 10. So the, the stories behind what they had to go through and yet still develop this new town. So I'd like to uh, invite everybody to come to the walking tour July 30th, Monday night at 6 p.m. Bring bug spray and sturdy shoes. I was once young and free, but my troubles got me to this mess. It's now I'm evil, so they say in my school. If you're looking for some fun family projects this summer, head to Whitesboro's Discount Hobby Center for rocket kits, model cars, and airplanes. Just trying to find my way back home. Discount Hobby is open Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 4.30, and Saturdays, 9.30 to noon. Just trying to find my way back home. A real draw in Whitesboro is the Boulevard Diner, known for its fast homemade food. It's open seven days a week, and you can have breakfast all day. We're going to go inside and talk to the owner, Rich. We've been here 12 years. We opened up in April of 1995. Okay, now how did you get into this business? I've been in the restaurant business my whole life. Uh, I opened up uh, a place in Cassville five years ago. I went to culinary school at Johnson & Wales down in Providence, Rhode Island. After I left there, I was uh, three years out in Boston, working for a Sheridan Corporation. Decided to move back home. and. Uh, opened up my own place and like I said I was in a small place out in Cassville and then after I did that came down here and opened this up and uh, knock on wood things been successful. Rich's right hand man is his son Rich Jr. Um, he started with me about a year ago. He graduated from MPCC's culinary program and uh, he seemed to enjoy the restaurant business and he's jumped right in and picking up the back end of my shoes and hopefully things are going to work out for him also. Um, so, you know, we're just trying to keep it a family thing. I got 20-some-odd uh, employees, and they all do a great job for me. I, I'm hoping that they like it because they stick around and keep going. Let's see 